In this clip I will look at the inverse functions of exponential functions. In order to do so I look at monotonicity of a function. Well a function f is called monotonically increasing monotonically increasing if I start with two elements from the domain x and y such that x is smaller than y, then the function value in x, the, the f evaluated in x and f evaluated in y, then fx should be smaller than fy. And similarly, we say that f is monotonically de decreasing instead of increasing. If x smaller than y implies that fx is larger than fy. Yeah, so. For higher values in the domain, I get lower, lower function values. Well, there's a property that monotonically decreasing or increasing functions are always injective. Yeah, think a moment what this means. So monotonic functions are injective. And we also concluded that actually injective functions are invertible because for any any element in the range of the function there has a unique original and therefore the function must be invertible so as a corollary as a direct consequence of this property yeah we've been looking at exponential functions and exponential functions take the shape fx equals a to the power x, this must be invertible. So for a smaller than 1, I have a decreasing function, monotonically decreasing function, and for a larger than 1, I have a monotonically increasing function. Well, the logarithm is actually the inverse of an exponential function. So... Suppose fx equals a to the power x, where a is larger than 0 and a is unequal to 1. Yeah, so a is larger than 0 and unequal to 1. Then the inverse is called a logarithm. The inverse, f inverse of x, is called a log of x. Yeah, so it's a name. It's not a result, it's not a direct formula, but I know that the inverse must exist and we give it a name. Its name is A log. So what about the domain of the function F inverse? Well, I know that the domain is of the function is no more than the range of the function, and we've seen before that actually the range of the function is zero infinity. And the range of f inverse is nothing else than the domain of the exponential function which equals r. So now look at the graph. How can we find, so in, the, in blue I see the function a x. And I know that the inverse is the yellow line so if 0, 1 is on the graph of the function for any exponential function a to the power x, then I know that 1, 0 must be on the graph of the function a log of x, since it's only the reflection of the graph of a to the power x in the line x equals to y. So from this observation I can uh, retrieve a lot of properties of this inverse function a log. Yeah, for instance, the a log of 1 equals 0 because I 0, 1 is on the graph of a to the power x, then 1, 0 is on the graph of a log. So if I plug in 1, a log of 1 equals 0. And why is that? Well, just because a to the power 0 equals 1. Well, similarly, since 1 
comma a is on the graph of a to the power x, then I know that a comma 1 is on the graph of the a log. Yeah, so a log of a equals 1, since a to the power 1 equals a. And there's also some other properties that I will show you in a minute. The a log of x times y equals the a log of x plus the a log of y if only x and y are both positive. Yeah, so we must have that I can only show you this identity for x is such that x is larger than 0, y is larger than 0, since I know that the a log has a domain that can only be applied to numbers on 0 infinity. The domain of a log is 0 infinity. Okay, also we, there's a very convenient rule which says that if I apply a log x, a log to x to the power r, then I can just take out this r. So a log of x to the power r is r times a log of x. Also, I discussed a very special logarithm and uh, the, or, or the spe very special exponential function, and this is the function where a is set to e. Yeah, it is the unique function according to which the slope of the tangent line in zero has uh, the, the, the slope one. So this holds for a equals to e. Now I define the natural logarithm as the ln of x, which is just the inverse of this very special exponential function. So fx equals e to the power x, then the inverse of x is called the ln of x. So we have a very special property that actually it may seem that we need a lot of logarithms for any a we have a different logarithm but actually there's a very convenient property which says that actually we only need to know one and that is a natural logarithm we can derive if we understand a natural logarithm then we can find all values a log of x for any arbitrary number a and we see that actually the a log of x is the ln of x divided by the ln of a, so that the a log is just a scaled version of the ln, which is the e log. Now I will prove that uh, the a log of x is just a rescaling of the ln of x, so that a log of x is ln of x divided by the ln of a. Well, suppose a to the power x equals y, then we know that the inverse a log y equals x. Yeah, so moreover, if a to the power x equals y, and we take the logarithm on the both sides, the ln of a to the power x then ln of a to the power x equals the ln of a of y. So using the property that actually the exponents, the exponents over here can be put for the logarithm, then we see that x moves downwards, so x times the ln of a equals the ln of y in which case x equals the ln of y divided by the ln of a. Yeah, so x equals the ln of y divided by the ln of a. But now recall that actually x related to y in the following sense, that x equals the a log of y, so that the a log of y equals the ln of y divided by the ln of a. 
And this reasoning holds for any value y in zero infinity. Now I'll show you the proof of the following property that the a log of x times y equals a log of x plus a log of y for y and x larger than zero. Well, I'll take x and y larger than zero. Then the first observation is that x times y equals, well, we can first take the log, a log of x times y, and then take the inverse, right? The inverse function a to the power a log x of y equals x of y. On the other hand, x times y, x equals a to the power a log x, and y equals a to the power a log y, so that x times y equals a to the power a log x times a to the power a log y. Now use the rules for working with power functions. So now we see that a to the power something times a to the power something is a to the power something plus something, a log y. So now we see we have two descriptions of x times y, and we can equate them. So these are equal. So a to the power a log x y equals a to the power a log x plus a log y. So now recall that the function a to the power x, the exponential function, is actually injective. Either it's monotonically decreasing or it's monotonically increasing. Yeah, so x, the function which maps x to a to the power x, is an injection. So it must hold that actually when I have two images which are the same, under this power function, so a to the exponential function, so a to the power a log x times y equals something else here, then the powers here should be the same. Yeah. So assume that a to the power a log x times y equals a to the power a log x plus a log y, then since the function is injective, it must hold that a log x times y equals a log x plus a log y, which we needed to show. Finally, I will give a proof of the following statement. a log of x to the power r is r times a log of x for all x larger than zero. Well, suppose we take an x larger than zero in r, any arbitrary number in r. Yeah, so r is any number in r. Then the first technique is, well, similar to what we've seen before, x to the power r can be written as a to the power a log x of r. Yeah, since a and a log, they are the inverses, so actually they together, composed together, they are the identity. Also, if we write x as a to the power a log x, then x to the power r is no more than a to the power a log x to the power r, and we use the normal rules for calculating powers, then we see that this equals a to the power r times a log x in the expo exponent. So again, we have two descriptions, xr equals this term and xr equals another term, and uh, both terms have in common that these are the powers related to the powers of the exponential function. So we use injectivity of x to ax, again, to deduce that actually the powers must be the same. a log x to the power r should be equal to r times a log of x.